The lock, a very familiar and useful thing in our daily life. You won't find a single person who has never used a lock. Have you ever wondered how this useful thing works? What's inside it? Why every lock does have its own unique key? In today's video, we will try to find answers to these questions. So let's start without delay. Just as the locks that we see around us are different in shape, so are the parts and mechanisms inside them. Disc tumblers, lever tumblers, pin tumblers, deadbolts, and combination locks are some of the common types of locks seen around us. Today we will talk about the mechanism of lever lock. The curved metal rod above the lever lock is called the shackle, and the lower part is the main body. The shackle must be tough to cut tools to ensure the lock security. That's why the shackle is made from stainless steel to serve the purpose. Other critical components of the lock are enclosed in a two-layer security system inside the body. Two stainless metal sheets are firmly bonded together and provide the first layer of security from the outside. It also has a keyhole on the front side. Another pair of metal sheets offers the second layer of protection. It houses the lever system of the lock which is tightly placed inside. Before we get to know these parts, let's see how the lock works. The primary purpose of the lock is mainly served by the shackle and this metal plate called latch. When the latch is stuck in this notch of the shackle, the shackle cannot come out anymore. This is the lock state. This latch is basically connected to the main lever. So to open the lock, we have to move the main lever backwards, which is done by the key. When the key reaches the V-shaped cut and turns to the right, the latch comes backwards and the lock opens. If we rotate the key left, the latch again comes forward and gets stuck in the notch of the shackle. Two rectangular cuts and a small rod erected at the center help to limit its movement. So, why can't the shackle come out completely when the lock is open? This small bump at the bottom of the shackle is responsible for this. The shackle is inserted into this plate's hole and gets caught in this bump when it wants to come out. A spring does the work of lifting the shackle. The labors rotate around a metal hub. The wire attached to the labor acts like a spring and provides a restraining force. This extended part prevents the rod of the main labor from moving to the other side. Turning the lever a certain amount with the key allows the rod to move from side to side, and the lock opens. Now let's find out the answer to the most curious question. Why is a unique key required to open a lock? If you pay close attention, you will see that the sizes of the protrusion of labors are different. Some are small, some are large, and some have two such protrusions. For this reason, if the labor is rotated less, it is stuck in the upper protrusion, and if it is rotated more, it is stuck in the lower protrusion. The inverted pie-shaped plates reduce the wear and tear among the levers. The placement of the plates is not fixed and is randomized with the levers to create a unique combination. Unlike the levers, the pie-shaped plates don't move. Thus the uniqueness of lever protrusion and the randomization of the inverted pie-shaped plate make a unique lock that requires a unique key to open. So, the summary is that, you need the right key to lift the levers perfectly to unlock the lock. Even a small amount of fault will result in failure. Thus padlocks are making our assets secure and lives stress-free.